we have a very simple task. Given an HTML markup, we want to write a program that produces a sanitized version, stripping out any tags or attributes that allow JavaScript execution. This means removing event listener attributes, href attributes with JavaScript protocol, script tags, and so on. If it sounds like an easy task, think it off as a challenge. Try building a sanitizer if you are a programmer. In the last video, we realized that doing this task server side isn't the best idea because of HTML parsing differentials. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. In the end, we proposed moving the sanitizer parser from the server side to the browser zone DOM parser to avoid parsing differentials. The folks at Google obviously recognized this issue in server side sanitizers and built a client side sanitizer called Closer. But even then, a subtle parser differential allowed cross site scripting on Google search bar using this payload. Sounds pretty cool, right? That was just one basic partial differential in client side sanitizer that led to an XSS. In this video, we'll see how that bug works and also we'll find out that building a client side sanitizer is also very hard due to an interesting partial differential called round trip problem. So let's dig in. Let's start with the infamous Google MXSS discovered by my colleague Masato. Live Overflow already has two amazing videos on this bug. So let's just quickly recap this. First, we need to understand how the browser handles the no script tag during HTML parsing. A user can disable JavaScript in their browser. And if a website wants to notify the user that the site doesn't work without JavaScript, the no script tag comes in handy. What this means is when JavaScript is disabled, or in other words, according to the HTML specification, if the scripting flag is disabled, the content inside a NoScript tag is treated as HTML and rendered normally like any tag. For example, in this snippet, the B and S tags inside NoScript tag are rendered because JavaScript is disabled in this iframe. However, when JavaScript is enabled, or in other words, according to the HTML specification, the scripting flag is enabled, the content inside the NoScript tag is treated as raw text, similar to how the browser handles content inside a style tag in the HTML namespace as we discussed in the last video. So in this case, where JavaScript is enabled in this iframe, the bold tag and stride tags inside the NoScript tag are not rendered because they are considered as raw text. This makes sense because NoScript tag is supposed to notify users only when the JavaScript is disabled. Now, this core behavior is what Masato leveraged to bypass both Google Closer's client-side sanitizer and DOM Purify to get access on Google search bar. Both DOM Purify and Google Closer uses different methods for passing HTML strings. DOM Purify uses DOM parser and Google Closer uses template tag. The important point here is that the scripting flag is set to disabled, meaning JavaScript is always disabled during the passing that takes place inside these both methods. This means the content inside the NoScript tag is treated as regular HTML. So this is how the DOM tree looks when passed with DOM parser or by template content. Notice how the bold and strike tags are treated as elements, reflecting the behavior of NoScript when JavaScript is disabled. You can probably see where this is leading, a partial differential. This is a payload Masato used to bypass Google Closer and achieve access on Google Search. Let's see how this works. Initially, the sanitizer uses template content to pass the DHS markup. Since the scripting flag is disabled with template content passing, everything inside the NoScript tag is treated as normal markup. So the sanitizer sees the NoScript tag, which looks harmless, and keeps it. It also sees the bold and paragraph tags and keeps them as well because they're not dangerous. The important part to note here is the title attribute of P tag, which sneakily carries our payload. It contains a closing NoScript tag and an image tag with JavaScript on error event listener. But since these are inside an attribute, they are treated as attribute values, not actual HTML. So they are not dangerous, so Closer keeps it. Now, this is where things get interesting. When the sanitized HTML is later inserted into the DOM using inner HTML, the browser repasses it, but this time with the scripting flag is enabled which is usually the case for any user's browser. So the browser parsing produces this DOM tree. If you notice carefully, the browser parser treats everything inside NoScript tag as raw text, not as HTML elements, because the scripting tag is enabled. And this whole content is treated as raw text until it finds this closing NoScript tag. The trick here is that the closing NoScript tag inside the title attribute 
acts as a closing tag now. Once the noscript tag block ends, the image tag becomes active and its on error event listener triggers, leading to an XSS vulnerability on Google Search. Mind blowing, right? This is how a small parser differential led to an XSS vulnerability in the Google Search bar. Now, let's move on to the even crazier example of partial differential. The partial differential we saw for the Google MXS wasn't too bad, but the ones we are about to discuss takes things to the whole new level, making client-side sanitizers incredibly hard to get right. In the year 2020, Mihao Bentkowski researched on bypassing DOM Purify, the most used HTML sanitizer, introduced a whole new level of complexity to the HTML sanitization problem. Here is the payload Mihao used to bypass DOM Purify. What we are looking at is not just a simple XSS payload. In my opinion, it's a carefully crafted piece of art by an artist. Let's see why. When DOM Purify passes this, it uses DOM parser to build a DOM tree and checks each node. It sees form, math, and M text. Everything seems harmless. Finally, it reaches the style tag, which is in the HTML namespace. So its content is treated as raw text. DOM Purify doesn't flag anything dangerous because this DOM tree isn't actually harmful and doesn't execute JavaScript, so it returns the serialized string. However, notice that the structure of the serialized string differs from the initial markup. And here's where it gets interesting. When the serialized string is inserted into the browser DOM using inner HTML, we would think that nothing would happen, right? Yet, out of nowhere, a JavaScript alert pops up. How the heck it happened? To investigate this, when we inspect the DOM tree after the browser passes it inside in HTML, we find something strange. The whole DOM tree is changed. The style tag is moved. It has switched from the HTML namespace to the MathML namespace. This change means the content inside style tag is no longer treated as raw text, but as elements, allowing the image tag and its on error event to execute. And just like that, a weird mutation that caused a namespace switch of style tag from HTML to MathML during the second passing in the browser bypassed the sanitizer. I mean, how the heck did we end up with two different DOM trees for the same HTML markup? Isn't this the same issue we faced with server-side sanitizers? And how did the style tag move and switch namespaces from HTML to MathML? To understand that, we first need to look at the warning in the HTML specification. From now on, we call it as the round trip problem. The specification states that it is possible that the output of this algorithm, if passed with an HTML parser, will not return the original tree structure. Tree structure do not round trip a serialize and repass step can also be produced by the HTML parser itself, although such cases are typically non confirming. Unquote. Essentially, what this means is if you parse an HTML document into a DOM tree, serialize it back to HTML, and then again repass it, you might not get the same DOM tree. The structure can change between parses. Let's see an example straight from the HTML specification itself. According to the spec, a form cannot have another form inside it. So if you try this, the inner form will be completely removed during the parsing because an input tag cannot belong to two forms. But interestingly, the specification also includes an edge case where nesting a form inside another form is possible in particular cases. Here is that particular case. In this HTML, the forms are not nested, but there is a misnested div tag. Um, it could be any other tag, but let's use div. To handle this case, when this HTML is passed, the DOM tree will have a nested form due to the misnested div tag, and the input tag becomes associated with the inner form. Now, notice this. When we repass the serialized HTML, the nested form is removed because we don't have a misnested div tag in the serialized markup. So we started with one HTML markup, passed into a DOM tree with nested forms. After serialization and reparsing, we end up with a different DOM tree, this time without the nested form. In short, we get two different DOM trees for the same markup after each parsing. It's not just this case. The HTML specification even includes another example showing where parsing twice produces different DOM trees. And there could be many more such cases. Side note, make note of this form mutation. We'll use it to construct our DOM purify bypass. Now, think about how this can be exploited to bypass a sanitizer. Isn't the round trip problem similar to the server-side sanitizer partial differentials we discussed in the last video?
Essentially, by using this, we can make the sanitizer parser see one DOM tree while the browser parser sees another. It's like a glorified partial differential, just like with the server-side sanitizers. I mean, give a hacker a hint about this interesting behavior, and it quickly turns into a bug. And that's what Mihao exactly did. This was the first piece of the puzzle that he used in his research to bypass the DOM purify. To understand the next piece, we need to dig further into the HTML specification to understand MathML text and HTML integration points. As we discussed in the previous video, when the parser encounters SVGR math tags, it switches parsing to the SVGR MathML namespaces respectively. But what if we want to use HTML tags inside SVGR MathML? To handle this case, the HTML specification provides tags known as MathML text integration points and HTML integration points, allowing HTML tags within these namespaces. Let's see with an example as usual. For MathML, elements like mText, mi, and mo are MathML text integration points. When the parser encounters these tags, it switches from the MathML to the HTML namespace, allowing HTML tags to be used inside MathML. Here is an example that allows us to use bold, italic, and style tags within MathML using mText text integration point. As you can see, inside the MathML namespace, every child of mText is in HTML namespace, allowing us to use HTML tags like bold, and italic, and style. Also, notice how the style tag contents behave differently depending on the namespace. Inside MathML namespace, the style content is treated like just tags. But here, inside the mtext, it contains are treated as raw text because it is in the HTML namespace. We can replace mtext with mi, mor, mn, and ms and still get the same behavior. Similarly, in SVZ, we have HTML integration points like foreign object, desk, and title. These allow HTML elements inside the SVZ namespace. Now, I think we have all the puzzle pieces. With nested form behavior and integration points in mind, let's construct a payload like this to attempt a sanitization bypass. The goal is to trick the sanitizer parser by placing the payload inside the style tag of MathML integration point like mText. Since it's in the HTML namespace, it contents are treated as raw text and sanitizer keeps the image tag. And when this serialized HTML is inserted into the DOM, the second passing takes place. And we expect the inner form to be removed because forms cannot be nested as discussed before. And with it, the hope is that the style tag will also be moved out of mText and comes directly under math. This would allow the content of style to be treated as regular elements instead of raw text, enabling the JavaScript to execute. But when we test this payload in the browser, no pop-up alert appears. Looking at the DOM tree, after the second passing, we can see the style tag wasn't removed from the mText. It stayed in the HTML namespace and as a result, our exploit failed. So we need another piece of the puzzle which requires digging even more deeper into the HTML specification. This reveals two interesting tags in MathML namespace, mglyph and malinemark. According to the HTML specification, children of MathML text integration points are placed in the HTML namespace by default except for mglyph and mlinemark. These two will remain in MathML namespace if they are direct children of the integration points like mText. Is what that means. Here, every child of mText is treated as HTML namespace tags. So anchor, bold, style are all HTML tags. However, if mglyph is a direct child of mText, the children of mText will stay in the MathML namespace. As we can see here, the mglyph a, style tags are all in MathML namespace because mglyph is a direct child of mText. But if mglyph is not a direct child of mText, which is the case here, the usual mText parsing applies, meaning all children are placed in the HTML namespace. This is some peculiar behavior and which is what we needed for the final piece of our puzzle. Now let's understand our final bypass. Here we added the mglyph. After the first passing, inside DOM purify using DOM parser, this is the resulting DOM tree. DOM purify will iterate through the tree and remove dangerous elements. Since nothing is dangerous here, it keeps it. And finally, it returns the serialized HTML. Now, when we insert this payload into the page DOM using inner HTML, a second passing occurs. According to HTML spec, the inner form is invalid. So it gets removed. And in this process, making mglyph 
a direct child of mText. As a result, mglyph switches to the mathml namespace and the style tag also inherits this namespace too. So now the content of style tag are no longer treated as raw text because it is not in HTML namespace, it is in mathml namespace. The image tag renders and JavaScript executes. Beautiful. I don't know about you, but this literally blows my mind. The amount of research, reading and creativity that must have went into constructing this payload is just amazing. Who shout out to Mihao Bentkowski for this awesome research? This is truly the art of hacking. It's fascinating. When this research was published, other security researchers found similar mutations, elements like A table A triggered, which we saw in the HTML spec, also been used to bypass DOM purify. These exploits leverage namespace switches from MathML to HTML, HTML to MathML, SVG to HTML, uncovering even more vulnerabilities. Now, a lot of work went behind to fix this. DOM purify being a tolerant sanitizer couldn't just remove MathML and SVG tags. They needed to keep them to avoid affecting many users who rely on DOM purify for these features. So Mihao Bentkowski and Mario Heydrich worked together to address this issue enforcing strict checks on which tags are allowed within specific namespaces. I won't go too deep into the patch details, but if you are interested, you can check them out here. Now, the thing is, while the namespace confusion issue has been addressed, MXSS remains an unsolved problem because of the round trip problem. Consider this, what if there is a mutation deep within the HTML specification just waiting to be found, or a browser bug? that allows style tag to escape the HTML namespace and jump into MathML namespace during the second passing. This could still lead to a sanitizer bypass. For a long time, around 3 years, no significant issues were identified that could allow DOM purify sanitizer bypass. Everyone thought there was nothing left in the HTML spec or in browsers that could bypass DOM purify. But a month ago, a guy named Isis Font found a very interesting point in the HTML specification that bypassed DOM purify again. So what the spec says is, the algorithm described below places no limit on the depth of the DOM tree generated. It is recognized that practical concerns will likely force user agents to impose nesting depth constraints. What this essentially means is that, according to the spec, there is no limit on how deeply nested tags can be. You could have an infinite number of deep tags nested inside each other. But in practice, browser can't handle infinite nesting, so they impose limits. For example, in Chromium source code, there is a unit test that ensures the HTML parser doesn't allow the nesting depth of elements to exceed 512 levels. So what happens here is that after 512 nested div tags, the browser can't handle any more nesting and every tag after the 512th level of depth here will become a child of 511 tag. This is exactly the kind of mutation we can exploit to bypass the sanitizer. It all comes down to crafting a payload that leverages this nesting depth limitation and bypass the sanitizer. I was going to explain one of the payloads that my colleague Masato came up with that bypass DOM purify using this nested depth limitation. But the video became too long. So I'll leave it as a challenge. Try to figure it out. Also, if you can't figure out the payload that can bypass DOM purify using nested depth limit, leave a comment. If enough of you ask, I'll make a video on it. The bypass is absolutely crazy. Trust me. After ISIS font submission, many folks like Kevin Mizu and Rothak have came up with numerous bypasses exploiting the nesting limit. So as usual, Mario swiftly responded by implementing a depth limit check. Now, DOM purify is even more secure. So is MXSS finally a fixed problem? Well, for now, that is until someone like ISIS font or Mehao Benkowski discovers another wild mutation leading to more bypasses. Finally, I created a GitHub page with all the cool MXSS bugs from its inception in 2007. Make sure to check it out and comment down below what cool bug I should explain next. That's all from me. Until next time, peace.